Hi, it's Bev. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about five business norms that I have decided don't work for me and I'm going to ditch them. I'm a 58 year old accidental entrepreneur and I have ADHD and I found that these bits of business advice that are often spouted by the business gurus out there as being necessary for business success I've just found they don't work for me and I've decided I'm going to ditch them. So I've got five business norms I want to share with you and I love your thoughts on whether you agree with me, whether they've worked for you and let me know also in the comments what business norms have you been taught by the gurus that you've decided to ditch as well. So my first one is the idea of work-life balance. Now on the surface, Having a balance between your work and your home life in, you know, in business or in your career makes a lot of sense. But as somebody with ADHD and somebody who works for myself, it doesn't work for me because what is work-life balance? Balance isn't something that as an ADHD -er is, is a strong um, point for me anyway. But also when you're in business for yourself, there are times when you have to really knuckle down and you work more than you probably would if you were working a nine to five job for somebody else because the business dictates that. But equally, as an adhd -er, I find that there are times when I can really hyper-focus and I can work solidly for long periods of time and get some really great work done. There are other times though when I find that my body and my mind just have got nothing to give and I need to just switch off, veg out, recharge and if I was looking for a kind of a work-life balance that wouldn't really fit into the, my perception of what people mean by finding work-life balance because I couldn't block out my week into work times and rest times and time with the family and, and have it all plotted out like that because if I was in flow, if I was hyper-focused on getting something done and I felt obliged to have to stop what I was doing to take a rest because that's what work-life balance is about, I would find it incredibly difficult to then get back into flow, to then find the momentum to continue to do that task if I'd broken that momentum. Equally, there are days when, as I say, I have got nothing energy-wise to give. And if I felt I needed to work on that day because I was finding that nine to five, I'm going to work, you know, I'm going to work from 10 till three and that's all I'm going to do and then I'm not going to work for the rest of the day because that's about balance. If I didn't feel like I had the energy to work between 10 and three, I would feel so guilty and like such a failure for not getting the job done. So instead, what I have decided works better for me, and it is still a work in progress, I'm still learning to get better at this, is instead of finding work-life balance, I find energy balance. And that means I work when my energy is high, for as long as my energy is high and it feels good. And then when my energy dips, which it often does to the point of like, barely being able to you know get up off the sofa and brush my teeth sometimes it's kind of there's it's that much hard work just to do the basics on those days I will listen to my body and I will do nothing knowing very well that another wave of energy will come along and I'll be able to do the job better and that might not work for everybody of course it won't, we're all different. But for me, that feels like a much better way to go than to try and fit my work and my rest into some sort of artificial pattern that doesn't fit with my energy. And a way that I've done this that seems to be working really, really well, I've done this for a few months now, is to, 
I, I plan on a Sunday what I've got coming up for the week and I block out time in my diary, not, not in great detail. I don't list every single thing I'm going to do in those time blocks, but I block out time to know that in that week there are certain things I need to get done. But I always give myself a Thursday where I put nothing in the diary and it's like a contingency day. And that means that if Monday to, through to Wednesday, I've not got everything done that I needed to get done because maybe my energy levels have been low, um, then I know I've got that Thursday where I can catch up and I can catch up guilt free. If I have those times earlier on in the week where I'm not feeling it, I don't fret about it. I don't feel guilty about it because I know I've got some slack built into the week. Equally, if I've had a high energy week and I've got loads of stuff done and um, bag up to date, on a Thursday it means I get to veg out or chill out with friends or maybe if my energy is still high, continue working because I love working. I love my job. I love my business. So the work-life balance doesn't really come into it, but energy balance absolutely does. So that is my first business norm. Oh, let me try that without a squeaky voice. That's my first business norm that I'm choosing to ditch, the work-life balance myth. Norm number two is this idea that we should all have a structured morning routine. I'm not a morning person. I'm very much a night owl. My energy levels are highest in the evening. I don't like early mornings. So a morning routine doesn't really work for me. I did read Hal Elrod's The Miracle Morning a few years ago and I tried it for a month. I was getting up at sort of half past four, five o'clock in the morning and I was doing his, I think they're called savers exercises where you write in a journal and you do some meditation and you do some exercise and I can't remember what all the others were, visualizations. And all I did was find that I was, it was so early in the morning I was falling asleep on the bit that I was meant to be trying to read. I couldn't really focus on anything. And it also meant that by the time sort of 10 o'clock in the morning came where I would normally start work, I was so tired. I, I, I'd lost the first couple of hours of my day. So morning routines just don't work for me. I don't have to get up in the morning and spend time planning my day because I do that at the start of the week and I map it out for the week so I have an idea of what I'm going to be achieving anyway and I just find that morning routines make me less productive than having a more free-flowing start to my day. Of course we're all different and it may well work for other people. I do find that these guru advice um, pieces that we get they probably do work for the person giving the advice, but we are all unique and we are all so different in, in how we, in our cadence and our rhythm, our body rhythms. So I think it's really important that we find out what works for us as an individual and not try to squeeze ourselves into a box dictated by somebody else with a different body rhythm. So that's the second um, business norm that I would ditch, that is the morning routine. And norm number three is the idea of dressing for success. This idea that we have to look and dress a certain way to be seen as plausible or um, credible in our business. Now, I worked for 30 odd years in an office environment where the expectation was that you would wear office type clothing. So, we, it would have been frowned upon if we'd gone into work in ripped jeans and, you know, T-shirts with logos on and things like that. But since I've been working for myself, I think when I first started my own business, I fell into the trap of thinking I had to dress a certain way to be seen as credible. So I, if I went networking or if I was delivering corporate training, I'd feel I had to be dressed sort of suited and booted in a sort of formal business wear. 
And I have to tell you, I'm never comfortable in that way of dressing. I'm much happier to be less formal, probably not ripped jeans and logo t-shirts. That's not my thing really. But to be in clothing that I would say I wear for comfort rather than to impress. Because if I'm dressed in a way that feels uncomfortable to try and fit somebody else's um, perception of what I should look like, then I find that I'm not able, able to concentrate on what I'm doing. I'm distracted by not being comfortable in what I'm wearing. So it might be that I'm fidgeting with my skirt or pulling around at the collar of my shirt or, you know, it just feels a bit tight and constrained. Whereas I find if I just wear what I feel comfortable in, I cannot have to think about what I'm wearing. It's not even an issue. And I can honestly say, I don't think in the six years I've been running my own business, what I've been wearing has been a deal breaker as to whether or not I got that bit of work. And I think it's less important then we maybe give it credit for. If you've got a very quirky character, quirky personality, and your dress and style reflects that, then go for it because it might repel some customers that you that, that don't want to work with you because you look like that, but do you want to work with them anyway if they're judging you for what you're wearing? Or do you want to attract those quirky customers that get you for who you are? For me, that feels much more authentic than trying to squeeze yourself into a style that doesn't fit you, that doesn't feel right for you. So that's my third norm that I would ditch, this idea of having to dress for success. Business norm number four that I would ditch is the one-to-one -one follow up meeting after a networking event. Now, I get that you get to know people much better in a one-to-one -one situation than you do maybe talking to somebody for five minutes in a group networking meeting. But the reason I would ditch them is because my experience has been that they take up so much of my time and more often than not, they're instigated by the other person and they're much more for their benefit than they are for mine. Now, I know that might sound a bit selfish, um, but stick with me here. I love meeting people one-to-one. -one. I, I don't have a massive problem with that. But invariably what happens is if I go to a networking event and I get asked by lots of people for one-to-ones, the people pleaser in me feels a little bit awkward saying no. And what happens then is I end up having these one-to-one -one meetings which aren't quite so bad if they're virtual, but quite often they're meeting up for a coffee to get to know somebody. And I do prefer that actually because I like the energy that you get when you connect with somebody in person. But quite often it's a, an hour's meeting, but by the time you've driven there, got settled, driven back, you've lost maybe three or four hours of your day. And the problem is most of the time I'm not instigating these. So what happens is I go and I have these sort of one-to-one -one meetings and very little of it is about me and what I do. And it often turns into somebody pitching at me for an hour. So whilst I'm not 100% against one-to-ones, I am now much more discerning about who I agree to have a one-to-one -one meeting with. And I will only do that if I think that there is a mutual benefit from us getting to know each other better. Now, the fear there is that, oh, but you might be missing out on an opportunity. And I take that risk. Um, but unless I can see that there is a mutual benefit, a synergy in some way that we can potentially build on, I'm going to say no to the one-to-ones. That is, if it's all my benefit, then it's still a no. If I don't see how that other person can benefit from the meeting, it's a no. If it's all for the other person's benefit and I can't see how I will benefit, it's a no. But if I can see that there's potential synergy there, then I may say yes. And I do enjoy them and I do like getting together and I do like getting to know people. 
but I think there's this almost this this norm that you have to go and meet everybody and you don't I think it's Warren Buffett that says you know successful people say no to the majority of things so we have to learn how to manage our time it's our most precious commodity we can't afford to just give it away without having some sort of intentionality around how we spend it so that would be my fourth business norm is I would reduce greatly the number of one-to-ones that I have following networking events and the norm number five that I would get rid of is the idea of being busy there seems to be in the western world these days um, a, a concept or a philosophy that being busy is some kind of badge of honor like being busy is the only sign of success and I fundamentally disagree with this I think busyness is it, it's a front for a number of different things I think it's a front it's a bit of peacocking oh I'm very busy almost where it says uh, my business is a success because I'm so busy and I don't think that's necessarily true I also think it is a, an indicator of our a, an indicator of, I'll try that again an indicator of our own personal perception of whether or not we're failing or not and personally nowadays if somebody says you know are you busy I'll say oh I'm as busy as I want to be because I like being busy but I like not being busy too and I don't equate being busy with being successful being productive or you know being efficient in fact a few years ago I worked with a guy who I think he was probably the busiest person I'd ever met he was always working uh, at the start of the day before anybody else arrived at work he'd be there he always worked later than everybody else he very rarely ever took lunch breaks or tea breaks his desk was always piled high with work he was Mr Busy and to the outside world looking in you'd think he was the you know the the hardest worker out there but actually after working with him for over a year I realized he was busy all of the time but actually he wasn't very productive he wasn't very effective and he certainly wasn't working efficiently he was very stressed all of the time and he didn't get an awful lot done even though he looked busy all of the time contrast that to the guy that came in after him who was the polar opposite he very rarely looked busy he he had this lovely clear desk I would love to know how he did that but he had this lovely clear desk most of the time he arrived at sort of start time and left with the rest of us so he did a day's work but he didn't do more than a day's work he'd go off to the gym at lunchtime and exercise he would always have time to stand and have a conversation and chat with people and he was incredibly effective and his output was high he just managed his time and his workload effectively and efficiently so he didn't have to be busy all of the time to be successful in fact quite the opposite so that is a business norm I'm definitely ditching is this idea of busyness we are in business we're not in busyness so that's number five that I'm ditching so let me know in the comments they're the five things I'm sure there are more if I thought about them but they're the five that come to mind today that I know are often kind of spouted as great business advice and I fundamentally disagree with them let me know in the comments what would you say is the bit of business advice that you feel we're all given that just doesn't work for you and if you've enjoyed this if you found it insightful in any way if you found it fun give me a like I'd love you to do that and if you fancy giving me a subscribe to see what else I come up with in the future that would be brilliant too until next time Take care.